Because I remember once the faculty member, it, it was a meeting where, uh, so we have these doctoral committee meetings, so the PhD student presents their work and we look at it. So all the doctoral committee members happened to be women, the guide happened to be a woman, the chair of the committee happened to be women, the student was a woman and the, just one of the members was male. And he walked in and he immediately said, oh, I feel like home with my wife and my daughters. <laughs> And then it occurred to me, I said, my goodness, if I said that every time I stepped into a room and said, oh, it feels like I'm with my father. And my, well, I couldn't say it. I don't have brothers. But, you know, imagine how it, it, it would feel silly, right? a five-year program from IIT Bombay, 93 to 98. Uh, I was in electrical engineering department and I was the only woman out of, uh, so I don't remember, maybe about 70 people total in the batch. For the entire batch, which uh, got admission in 93, of a batch strength of about 400, we were 10 girls. You know, I graduated from IIT in 1975, so there were no role models who were women. There were no professors. There was no one in leadership at IIT Madras. When you're a, a young woman growing up, you need to see a, a possible sort of career path for you. Otherwise, it won't even come into your consciousness. Consciousness, It won't even come into your imagination. So we do a lot of work in CSSL where we do assessment. So in STEM areas, what I see is that when I assess children across the country at grade four level, you will find that between the boy and the girl, both of them will score equally well in science and uh, language and mathematics. Whereas the, as the child grows, uh, you know, from 6th standard to 8th standard, etc., you will start slowly find that boys are not doing so well in language, but you will find that girls are starting to not do so well in maths and science. And when you explore further, you will find that uh, when you interview them, etc., etc., the girls have certain self-conditioning beliefs. And families also like say that if it's a girl, they'll say that, hey, they try to divert them more towards the arts, humanities and if it's a boy they try to you know uh, divert him more towards the stem and so on and this becomes a sort of a uh, its own circle you know vicious circle so you start believing so a lot of conditioning happens i grew up in an environment with a lot of social bias and uh, i think the only reason i kept on doing whatever i uh, kept on doing is because uh, at some intrinsic level, I felt that this is my life and I need to do what makes sense to me. Over the last decade, there has been an increase in the number of women uh, PhD scholars. We were at about 10% and now we are close to 30 plus percentage of women research scholars in IIT Madras. To be honest, I think that uh, in India, the issue as I see it uh, is not so much how many women enroll in the engineering program at least. The uh, challenge is more about sticking on. I was just looking up the numbers if you see in STEM education and maybe particularly in engineering the diversity is currently around 40 plus percent of women. That's at the college education level but then if you look at the uh, workforce the statistics currently are about 14% of women are in workforce. So where do these 43 minus 14% women go? If you look at leadership roles, you know, be becoming a dean or you know, at much higher levels, it is down to like 1% or so. It's all about um, women and power. So I'm not interested so much anymore in the percentage of, of, a, of the workforce that's female. I'm interested in the percentage of CEOs who are female. I'm interested in the percentage of government ministers who are female, because it's ultimately that when you have the power to change society, that's where we want women. I joined a Fortune 500 company. That was my first job. And it was quite, a, quite an amazing experience because here was this kid with a you know, business degree thinking, hey, I'm gonna sort of take on the world and uh, very quickly realized that it was pretty challenging. 
It was a 90% male-dominated work environment. Uh, women were getting 50% of the salary that the male counterparts were getting, and that was just company policy, and constantly hit on. When you're invited for meetings at the government side, so most often you'll be the only woman in the entire room. Irrespective of which industry, and whether you're in corporate, whether you're in media, whether you're in, you know, politics, this, this is the reality. Right now what happens is a woman's career is on hold, usually. After she gets married and she gets into, you know, a sort of has kids, the career is on hold. I was able to blossom more after the age of 50. It's high time we question this whole defining of roles by gender. I think that's where the problem is. Young single women in most places, not all, but in most places, have almost achieved equality. They can earn the same wages as men, they can work in the same uh, jobs. Um, the moment you decide to marry, have children, that everything is, is still, the cards are still stacked against you. So I call it the three M's. It's the barriers of the three M's, marriage, motherhood, and masculine work norms. They're the three big barriers that stand between women and, and full equality. You will be surprised that while many more are open with a woman actually taking a role, um, uh, playing football or driving a bike or etc. Let us say that 70% are okay with that. Uh, but you would find that only 60% or 50% are okay with saying that a man can feed a child or wash utensils. You get my point. So while you may say that the girl has to go out and work and you're okay with the girl going out and working, you're not in any way reducing her load. You will find that more and more women don't want to get married. If they get married, they don't want to have children. I had three children, uh, one after the other. Trying to do raise those children and work was like being hit by a tsunami. I couldn't do it. So, to be totally honest with you, the reason I started my own company was not because I'm particularly entrepreneurial or a, a wonderful innovator or all those other great, it was out of necessity. It's the role of a woman to be the caregiver. I think it's time that society changed that and really looked at it as a joint responsibility, be it in terms of care or as well as in terms of who the breadwinner is. We are 50% of the population. Um, our needs are different. Like, I, I can just uh, talk about the chair where I'm sitting, right? Chairs are normally designed for a male. Most of them, if you look at it, they're a male uh, frame. Even tables, the height of the tables. Most of the women suffer uh, because of this, right? So this is a very simple example. There are a lot of societal issues, there are engineering problems, which needs inputs from, uh, from women. Uh, we're different physically, we're different emotionally, we're different, you know, every way. And I think society needs to recognize that and value those differences. The way the culture of a place changes or the ideas that come in, they change a lot based on the person who comes in. And so if you always have one kind of person come in, they may be doing an excellent job. But it's, they're always bringing in one perspective. There are enough studies um, to show that uh, when you have good diversity, when you have a representative uh, population in any field, the uh, outcomes are definitely better and success in whatever terms you uh, define it uh, is more obvious. The world needs a very different um, type of leadership. Uh, it needs people to be far more empathetic, far more nurturing, far more open to different perspectives. There is a issue with respect to leadership uh, overall in our country and overall in the corporate workplace. And at the root of this is difference. When you use the word diversity, normally we see we don't like difference typically for whatever reason. Maybe there are you know uh, evolutionary biological reasons. But difference is actually a strength. I, I do think there are differences between men and women in the way we lead. I know that's a, that's a debatable subject. But I, in my experience, tells me that women do make different decisions um, about how to share resources, about how to nurture resources. And I do think we'd have a different planet now if we'd had balanced power. 
So I look at the need to have balanced power as 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 urgently needed to to save the planet. That sounds extreme to say that, but I truly believe it's true. Today in India, you've got 11.2% of board positions again held by women, which was very I think it was something like 6% in 2014. So we're making tremendous uh, progress, but you know, of course there's still a lot to be done. Being a woman in these uh, uh, you know, careers, etc., was an anomaly. It wasn't, it was just that, you know, Preeti's crazy, so she'll do this, that sort of thing. No more. So progress is maybe slower than many of us would like. But I think when you're talking about such deep-rooted change that we're arguing about, the only way to do it is peacefully and consistently over time. And one day we'll all wake up in every country and suddenly we'll realise that we're equal and our daughters and our sons can grow up having completely equal opportunities to fulfil their true potential. Ten years ago, even in our own campus, talking about gender, was like, huh, what is that sort of, uh, but now it's, it's, it's become um, possible to really address that. I certainly see a lot more men compared to, you know, my parents' generation who are uh, either taking the lead role in cooking or, you know, picking up the child from school and doing stuff like that. Granted, maybe it's in a more uh, privileged uh, kind of class, but uh, certainly a uh, lot more of that is happening. Men have had a wonderful deal. Th I mean, think about it. In most societies, they've been able to get educated, pursue the job of their dream, move wherever the job takes them, their home life, their children. Everything has been taken care of. The system was set up, I think, to serve a man's life, his wife and home. So there's a lot to lose. Um, so I do understand the reticence, but my one hope is the younger generations of men. I do think they're different. Um, they're much more comfortable with um, this idea of doing things that would have been traditionally thought of as female. I would say that my mom pushed her boundaries in her own way by being a working person, being a role model for me. I have tried to push my own boundaries in whatever is possible. So the generation after me should push it further so every person has to understand that unless you take it up and push the boundaries for your own personal self you are not going to change the society go after uh, something that you really love and you'll naturally do well in it you'll naturally carve out you know a long stint that that makes sense and career and so on and there will be obstacles and there always are all of us have obstacles that we overcome um, but it, it becomes easier to mentally handle when you just have that core of, of passion slash love for what you do.